using the list given to me by Dan, and the contacts from the lead lieutenant's phone. We've moved down the names, finding another top guy. We learn him and many others have this poker game every Saturday with a bunch of wise guys. Watching for a few weeks, we learn the men who frequent this establishment, all scumbags. There's also a woman who occasionally goes outside the building, taking out the trash, who also serves them drinks. And so, we wait. In a parked car down the street, we sit and watch until we see this tall brunette exit the building out the back door. Both of us wearing gloves and armed to the teeth. Lower our black ski masks over our face, and quickly we reach her, Jordan using a stun gun on her back. She falls to the ground. He binds her mouth and hands with duct tape. Minutes later, she slowly awakens in a daze. She knows the code to get in. Jordan, forcibly pushing the woman, saying, Give me the numbers, lady, or I'll kill you. Using a knife and cutting the duct tape with her hands now free, she hits the numbers on the pad, unlocking the back door. Jordan stuns her once more her limp body rapidly falling to the ground. Crashing through the door, our guns raised and drawn, I look over at Jordan. Kill them all, he says. Men are everywhere throughout this room. Some playing cards and eight ball at the pool table. The men, shocked, unable to even react or fire back. Bullets flying in every direction. Bodies falling over furniture, one man drops under the pool table. Jordan drops down to his knees, firing three rounds into the man's torso. Nine men, lying there, bleeding out and crying. You learn a lot about a person when you see them take their last breath. A bullet-ridden room full of smoke and gunpowder. Beer cans throughout the room, poker chips scattered about, blood-soaked cash. We double-tap each one of the men to make sure the job is done. After confirming all the men we came for are here and dead, hastily, Jordan runs out first, then myself. Removing our masks, running through a field of grass, making our way back to our car and getting the hell out of here. Speeding off. Spinning tires and smoke billowing from the ground, Jordan sticks his middle finger out the window, screaming, Rod in hell, you sick bastards. I look at him, horrified. Jordan is now laughing and cheering maniacally. You crazy son of a bitch. Get us out of here, I yell. Quite satisfied with our kills, we make a quick trip to the store, stocking up on beer and frozen pizza. <laughs> Screw it, don't judge us. Watching TV now at my place, drinking and just enjoying the evening. I begin field cleaning my guns, using Remington gun oil and bore cleaner. Firstly, I disengage the slide from its rack after cocking it back and then releasing its locking mechanism, removing the slide and then the barrel, removing the magazine and despring, using soft fabric and q-tips, wiping down the entire weapon, also ensuring to spray the lubricant on every metal moving part to prevent rust or possible locking. <laughs> Wouldn't want our guns to malfunction in the middle of a kill. Hearing the news playing in the other room, a reporter says, Breaking news here on the scene, Heather Smith. We've just learned there are f we have just learned that there are nine victims, all deeply involved in a notorious nationwide biker gang. We believe it could be a turf war dispute over who controls this area. More to come later, she says. Holy shit, Jordan. Look, man, we made the news. He begins flipping channels, seeing the report is on every channel. Looking at me while raising his cold one and smashing into mine. Cheers. Hell yeah. We continue to celebrate more and drink into the night. Music playing loud and headbanging, listening to Slayer. Enjoying ourselves and eventually passing out. It's morning now and we need to figure out our next move. I'm hit with this roller coaster of a headache. God, damn hangovers are a bitch. Then, 
Suddenly, a thought comes over me. Captain Alvarez! I shout out loud. Just then, Jordan walks in carrying a bowl of cereal and a gun. Dude, what the hell are you doing? You scared me. Who the hell is Captain Alvarez? Are we in trouble? He asks. No. Captain Alvarez is a contact my dad had many years ago. He used to exchange info. He'd always tell my dad about all these bad guys who would cheat the system and get out scot-free over technicalities. <sighs> Rapists. Murderers. Even child molesters and drug dealers. Yeah, I bet he can help us. Jordan begins pondering for a moment, putting his gun down and cereal. Well, let's find this guy, damn it. I want to get started right away, he says excitedly. Not so fast, Jordan. This isn't like taking a guy out for a few drinks and then going bowling. This is heavy shit, I say. A few days go by as we decide how we can go about this. I call up my dad once more and get the phone number for the captain. We arrange a meeting in a well-known coffee shop where all these donut-munching, barrel-ass crazy bastards frequent. You know, cops. We locate the captain and sit across from him. Completely stunned as he gets right to the point. All right, boys. What did you bring me here for? He asks while drinking his coffee. Stuttering, I quietly speak. Uh, well, we... Uh, Jordan intervenes. Captain, we heard you might want to correct the uh, system that is severely flawed. Captain looks at us suspiciously. Who are you guys? You're either vice or internal affairs. Well, I ain't biting. You won't get one word out of me, you pieces of shit scum. He begins to stand. I grab his arm firmly and quietly say, No, I'm Daryl's son and I've been getting vengeance for what these heartless assholes have been doing for years. Other cops watching. He swats my arm away, adjusting his uniform while sitting back down. Joseph? Hell, why didn't you say so? A smile forms across his face. But we want to correct the failed courts, I utter sternly. The captain looks at us both and says, Hmm. What exactly do you boys have in mind? Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook, come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud, drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so... Come check me out, okay?